Just yesterday, Starlink kind of quietly announced a new service that they're gonna be offering starting in Q2 2022, and that is Starlink Premium. Now, I have a ton of thoughts about this Starlink Premium, but first and foremost, what is it? So let's start there and take a look at this new announcement from Starlink that came out yesterday. Here we have Starlink Premium, and you can see that it's actually a different dish. This is a larger size dish, although we don't yet have exact specifications on how large it is. Their FAQ page has not yet been updated to reflect any of the Starlink Premium stuff. But it says Starlink Premium has more than double the antenna capacity of Starlink, delivering faster internet speeds and higher throughput for the highest demand users, including businesses. And then of course you can order now. We'll talk about pricing in just a second. Bigger antenna and more throughput. So designed specifically for high demand users, Starlink Premium helps ensure bandwidth for critical operations even during times of peak network usage. Higher speed, low latency, Starlink Premium users can expect download speeds of 150 to 500 megabits per second and latency of 20 to 40 milliseconds. So the latency is on par with what you see with normal non-premium Starlink. The speeds, however, 150 to 500 megabits. So 150 being the minimum, 150 is usually about what I get. I ran a speed test this morning. You can see I got 162.9. I typically, when I'm running speed tests on my Starlink, I usually get somewhere between 80 to you know 150, 160 on average. It usually sort of fluctuates in that range. Starlink Premium is saying that they can expect download speeds of between 150 and 500 megabits per second. Now how are they achieving that beyond just the sheer size of the dish? Well we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But it says it enables high throughput connectivity for small offices, storefronts, and super users across the globe. With Starlink there are no long-term contracts, no data caps, and no exclusivity requirements. So easy setup and priority support. So the support for Starlink has long been one of the complaints that people have. It started off you know, pretty good as they didn't have a lot of customers and they were just rolling out, but I think now that they've distributed Starlink dishes to you know, multi-thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, their support, is, their, their support infrastructure isn't great. So with this new Starlink Premium, it says your Starlink Premium kit arrives with everything you need to get online, including your Starlink Wi-Fi router cables and base. Starlink Premium is designed for improved performance in extreme weather conditions. Users will also benefit from 24 seven prioritized support. So it looks like they've got some sort of priority support queue if you are a Starlink Premium subscriber. Now, as far as the modem goes here, I'm, I can't really tell if it's different or not. We, again, we don't have any specs on the actual hardware yet, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. If you have any information about this modem and if it's different from the rectangular Starlink dish, the standard non-premium one, or the modem that comes with the non-premium one, let me know down in the comments below. So here is another big improvement, unlimited service location. So if this is geared towards businesses, right? So if you are a business subscriber, maybe you have multiple locations and you want Starlink at each of those locations, you can basically have multiple Starlink dishes, multiple premium Starlink subscriptions. It says it's ideal for rural and remote locations. Order as many Starlinks as needed and manage all of your service locations, no matter how remote, from a single account. And that's about it. That's basically all of the information that we have. And here we can see the Starlink premium pricing. So deposit $500. Keep in mind, non-premium Starlink is a $100 deposit. It's $500 for the dish plus $50 shipping, and then it's 99 bucks a month. $500 de deposit, $2,500 for the dish, and then the service is $500 per month, five times the cost of standard Starlink. And they are going to start delivering Starlink Premium as of Q2 2022. So let's go, let's go take this from the start now. Okay, so I, there's so much to unpack and so much to talk about with this new premium service. First of all, delivery starting in Q2 2022. There are people that have been waiting for the standard Starlink dish 
since early 2021, right? People that got their deposits in very early. Some people had, uh, you know, it was estimated they would get it by the, you know, Q4 2021. And then in Q4, an update came out that pushed all of those dates out. A lot of that has to do with global supply chain and chip shortage issues. That's also, uh, you know, they changed the original circular dish, the one that I have, into the rectangular dish. And some of the speculation on that change were, of course, it's probably cheaper to manufacture. It's certainly much lighter weight, so it's easier to ship around. Uh, but also it could have to do with these chip shortages, right? So the, the circular dish might have used components that when we came into this chip shortage became less available. So they kind of had to change the design a little bit. This one, I assume is probably designed with more of that in mind, right? So this might not have the same chip shortage issues you might be able to get your hands on Starlink Premium. And considering that it is a premium cost, I have no doubt that Starlink wants to sell these above and beyond the standard Starlink dish. I can't imagine that the manufacturing costs of this dish are going to be that much greater than the manufacturing cost of the standard dish. Let's say it's twice as much to manufacture this dish, just speculating some random numbers out there. They're gonna more than make up for that with the 5X cost of the service, right? So 100 bucks a month for non-premium, 500 bucks a month for premium. And you're not really getting a lot of extra for that, ex for that extra money, right? You're getting a few things that maybe businesses can use, but as an average consumer, it's really not worth the, the cost is not justified based on what you get here. So bigger antenna and more throughput. Okay, so if normal bandwidth for Starlink is, is about what I get, which is you know anywhere between like 80 to 150 megabits per second, that's totally fine for a home user. This gives you 150 to 500 megabits per second. Is that difference between 80 to 150 up to 150 to 500, is that difference worth $400 extra every single month? And again, that's gonna be an individually on a case by case basis. For home users, I'd say no. For schools, perhaps it would be. There's other businesses that can take advantage of this. We'll talk about that in a second. And more importantly, are they going to be throttling the speeds of non-premium users or prioritizing the connections for premium users in order to achieve those greater speeds. If there's too many people connected to a particular satellite or you know in a particular area, are they gonna throttle down non-premium users so that the premium users get that higher throughput and higher bandwidth? What else you get? You get the priority support, okay? So here's the thing though, with the Starlink dishes, sure you might get your priority support, but like I've never, I've had to call support just a couple times and really it was all email support, right? I've never actually called Starlink support. I had some, the, my modem had to be RMA'd or my power brick had to be RMA'd I think twice, right? And so I used their support. I didn't have a problem with the, their support experience, although I have heard a lot of complaints about their support experience. So if you're a business, I can imagine having that priority support might be beneficial if you have downtime and you need something RMA'd or replaced, or if you need to speak with them about some sort of troubleshooting issue, it's good to have that priority support. But again, is the additional $400 a month justified just for that feature and the other sort of features that they've thrown in? I, I don't really think so, because this is kind of a set it and forget it type of dish, unless there's actually a problem where something needs to be RMA'd or something's just not working, then you'd need to call support. But otherwise, most people are, it's gonna be fine on a month to month basis. You're not calling support multiple times a month with issues. Then this is the, what I think is probably the biggest benefit, especially for businesses. Now this is gonna have no effect on home users. It's a very, very small percentage of people that are going to need multiple locations and need to manage those multiple dishes at multiple locations from a single app interface, right? Home users just don't need that. It's just not something that, that most people are gonna ever take advantage of. 
But if you are a business, like I can imagine construction companies, right? Let's say you've got a big construction company, you've got multiple projects happening where crews are on site at different locations that don't yet have standard services that you can tie into and you're at those locations for you know six months or eight months at a time you know building a house or building a building whatever it is this then you might be able to take advantage of this right bring out your starlink dish change the address in the app fire it up and now you've got really good internet to cover that location for the duration of that project Another good example would be something like, um, you know, one of Crosstalk's customers is a production company where they go out to remote locations to film for TV and movies, and they're only at the location for two weeks, a month, you know, do they get their filming done that they need to get done, and then they're off to the next location. So again, that would be a company that can really benefit from something like unlimited service locations. You could have you know, 10 of these Starlink dishes, and each one is sort of passed out to wherever you happen to need it uh, for location shooting and stuff like that. I'm sure there's a ton of other businesses that I'm not mentioning that can take advantage of this feature. Uh, in fact, if you know of businesses that would, you know, really benefit from something like this, put that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about uh, your thoughts on this particular aspect of Starlink Premium. So to me though, overall, those features don't really justify the cost, at least not for the average consumer. Again, for businesses, perhaps, one thing that they have not mentioned uh, is the type of NAT that Starlink Premium is going to use. I can see this being a much more beneficial project or, or service level if it came with a static IP address for your dish. So normal Starlink, is what's called CG NAT. You always get sort of a shared uh, WAN IP address when you are presenting yourself to the rest of the internet. If Starlink Premium comes with a static IP address where businesses can benefit from, you know, voice over IP situations where, you know, maybe CG NAT isn't going to work, if they can benefit from any internal services where people in the outside world need to get in to you know, a NAS or a web page or an intranet or something like that, there's another thing, right? So a static IP address, if that it was part of this service, that starts to make this a more attractive option for businesses. But it's also just kind of weird that they're coming out with a new product a new service level and a new dish for Starlink when they're having a lot of trouble fulfilling the existing orders that are already out there for the dish that they've already released, right? They're also having, you know, trouble getting satellite there. They haven't fully built out their satellite network yet. So it's almost like, you know, it's almost, it almost feels like a cash grab, right? It almost feels like, well, you get this premium service, you might get it ahead of people that have been waiting in line for the non-premium service. Uh, you know, if it starts launching in Q2 2022 and they have a surplus of these large dishes available, people who put their deposit in today might get their Starlink premium dish and service before people that have had their reservation in for a year. Uh, to the older product, to the, to the non-premium product. In addition, it's long been speculated they are losing money per dish on the initial upfront investment for non-premium Starlink. Someone took their original dish apart and estimated that it was you know, probably somewhere around $2,000, $2,400 to produce those dishes where they were selling them for $500. So they were taking a pretty good hit on that manufacturing they've probably cut their manufacturing costs down significantly with the rectangular dish. I'm sure that's part of why they made that change. So maybe they're not losing as much money every time someone puts up the $500 initial investment to get the non-premium dish. But this one is $2,500 for the premium dish. I can almost guarantee that that is paying for that dish completely and possibly even making some profit uh, on the new dish, which of course is a much better business model for Starlink than losing money every time a new customer signs up. Are they doing this because they need to make money? Are they at a point where they might be in trouble 
with their finances and that's why they're putting out this product. That's total pure speculation on my part. I've heard arguments on both sides of that. I've heard arguments on like, yes, they're in trouble financially and I've heard arguments on, dude, it's SpaceX, they're subsidized by the government, believe me, there's no problem with them having any troubles financially. So I don't know, I don't really know where I sit on that. It's kind of just a wait and see, but definitely worth mentioning. And of course, if they're gearing this premium service towards businesses, I would love to see this modem slash Wi-Fi whatever have the ability to simply be a dumb modem and bridge through to whatever actual firewall equipment that business has on site. Like if you're running it into a PF sensor, an edge router or whatever, Cisco router, whatever you happen to be running it into, you know, it, there aren't really great options for that type of networking with the st non-premium Starlink service. You have to pay an extra $20 for an ethernet adapter, but you still have to use their modem, right? Uh, with the with the rectangular dish. The one that I have actually comes with an ethernet adapter, which is great, it, uh, and I think I can plug mine, I can bypass their modem entirely and just plug mine directly into ethernet, which is really nice. So if there are th that level of features, which we just don't know yet, we don't have enough detail about this product yet, uh, but I will uh, send out an update video if we do get any more information about sort of the specs of the dish or the specs of the modem that comes with this service. All right, so there you have it. Starlink Premium just announced yesterday. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.